So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to obviously Fight Talk and we are delighted to say we are joined by the Fire Kid. The explosive, the exciting. When you watch this guy fight, you've seen world class. We are joined by Tom Dukenwa. Hey guys, thanks for welcoming. Um, Tom, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Um, we've been lucky enough to watch you fight on a few, yeah, occasions, a few occasions in Bama. Yeah. Um, and you're fighting this weekend at UFC 216. So, firstly, how was camp um, in Albuquerque? As usual, perfect. Surrounded by uh, good uh, sparring partners that helps you to, to reach the best level without uh, injuring you. And at the same time, I am able to, to bring my French coach, French coach here, so the man of shadow, Bourama Traoré, uh, who is with me from the very beginning of uh, Bama. Uh, also, Michel Gillot, who is my uh, physical preparator. And um, also still uh, having uh, benefits from the amazing coach here, Greg Jackson, Mike Whipplejohn, Rafael Freitas for B- BJJ, and also uh, my coach uh, of wrestling, Lenny Loveo. It's a serious lineup of coaches. And when we spoke to you last in Dublin, uh, Manu Sharatori was with you yeah. on the night. That's for, for us, when we seen you defend against Alan Philpott was the last fight, but... You, you've now obviously you've moved with the UFC. You put off UFC offers previously before that to gain experience. So do you find? I think it was when you were 19 years of age. You were offered a contract first with the UFC. Do you now? Are you seeing the fruits of your labor? As in staying with Bama, becoming a, a multiple champion? Has that experience made your transition to the UFC easier? Yeah, thanks to Bama, I had the opportunity to fight against. Uh, very high level opponents in all the fields of the combat on the ground wrestlers and uh, stri- strikers so it helped me to be at my best level to to reach uh, ufc uh, as soon mm-hmm. as i was uh, as i was feeling the the most complete possible so yeah uh, the ufc reached me at the age of 19 and i signed at the age of 23 uh, so we were having a good uh, relationship and uh, knowing what, what was the best uh, time for me to get into the ufc octagon so um, at the age of uh, 23 after my last uh, um, contract with Bama, I felt that, that was definitely the good time, so I did it. Um, as Noel said, we got to see you a lot over here. You fought in Ireland a couple of times, and obviously you fought in the UK as well with Bama. Um, Cody Stamen, he said that he wasn't impressed with your your lead up to the UFC. He wasn't impressed with the opponents that you fought. We obviously saw the opponents. You took on all comers. You beat some really good guys. But what do you say to that when he says that you haven't fought anybody that good? Well, it's uh, the, the kind of... Um, mental sitting that doesn't speak to me a lot you know when you you he knows uh, i definitely know he's a very high level uh, opponent and you know i am a very high level opponent too and um i, I beat and uh, i've been uh, crossing um uh, swords with uh, with very high level uh, competitors in all the fields of the combat and uh you know that was in ireland i was in england and you you guys know that uh, the Dubliners or the Irish or the English are amazing fighters. And uh, we have, uh, in Europe, we have uh, one of the best level, especially with the McGregor era right now. So um, I'm not, you know, when you, when, you, when you get into a fight and you don't really know what to say, you just say, <laughs> it's pretty deep, your opponent and saying that uh, he, at the end of the day, you know, oh, you beat nobody. But it's just because maybe on the moment he, he didn't have any idea what to say. But, you know, I, I respect Cody for what he, he did, you know, and, 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 I'm, and I'm deeply sure he, he respect what I did and I, I fought against a very high level opponent. That's a fact. The fact that you fought here on a few occasions um, now, Tom, I'm not too sure if you're aware, but you're now adopted Irish. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you're, you're one of us now and <laughs> y- you have a big following here. Um, I know, for example, your UFC debut, white people are constantly meshing me saying, what time is Tom Dukema yeah. on? Did you find that with your, with your high level of experience, um, you defended your belt numerous times with Bama, you were a two-way champion. But when you made your UFC debut, there's a, there's a theory that Joe Rogan would always point to saying UFC jitters, as in your, it's more nerve-wracking to fight in the UFC octagon. Did you experience that? Was it, was it a little more nerve-wracking stepping into the UFC? Or were you, was it just another night's work under the bright lights for Tom Dukema? I was waiting, uh, having uh, way more pre- 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 pressure for, 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 for the last fight. And actually, you know, UFC is a big, 
is a big industry. Everything is so professional. The the fight week is so so fluent. You know, everything is smooth. Everything is professional. So, in order for 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 fighters get the the, the best uh, performance uh, during the night, and that's exactly what happened. I was way uh, less more stressed or way more relaxed, I should say, than um, than usually when I fight. Uh, in the U.S. or in 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 a, in, a, in in Ireland, because uh, the organization is so smooth and uh, because everything is is made for performance. Um, with the fight um, on such a big card, and you and you're high up on the card, you're you're basically you're main the the main event of the fight pass. So there's going to be a huge um, number of eyes again. You have fought on Bam, the biggest show in Europe, but does that add more pressure to you as well? Is that something you think about when you're in there? You have, like I said, you're basically adopted Irish now, so a lot of Irish people will be watching you, but the pressure of the eyes, does that add to it as well, or is that not something you think about when you step in there? No, actually, it's, uh, I would lie to you guys if I would tell you that uh, it's... Uh it's uh, it's uh, not anxious at all to be the the, the main the main um, event of the prelims. It is, but it's uh, also all positive for me because it's a new step for my career. It's uh, a new opportunity for me to uh, to mark my brand, to mark um, the spirits made with uh, my performance thanks to my training I had upstream. So everything is just positive positivity and just a good news uh, for the rest of my career. So I'm more in a mood where I enjoy every every day uh, till the fight and also after than uh, than to be stressed or overwhelmed. I am uh, aware of the pressure. I'm, uh, I am aware that a lot of stuff are overwhel- overwhelming right now, but every step is uh, is is delicious, you know. What's what's the the support back home in France, Tom? Because MMA still is is illegal. It's 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 not recognised in France. But I'm sure there's there is still a huge following in France for you. Um, so how tough? The double wed question, really. What's the support like back home? But how tough was it as well growing up in France? With I, I read an article where you used to um, get DVDs of UFC and Pride, and you were fascinated by it. But how difficult was it coming up in France, where it is an illegal sport? It's uh, for me that was actually something that uh, motivates me even more and develops me even more because uh, we are speaking English right now. And if, if MMA would have been um, legal in France and uh, doing all of my uh, previous fights in France, I would speak maybe <coughs> just French. It's not the best for the business because, as you know, the, the, the bigger part of the MMA is on the west uh, coast of the USA. And uh, in order to develop in that business, you need to speak in English. So just for that uh, simple fact, it is a good thing that, I, that I've been um, abroad my whole life and uh, developing my career in uh, beautiful countries like uh, Ireland that always uh, promotes me very well and supporting me, respecting you know. And um, England as well, it, it, it helped me for sure. It helped me a lot, you know, being uh, aware that uh, even if people, they, they will be supporting uh, your opponent m- most of the fights. Uh, at the end of the, of the fight, uh, where, when, you're, when your arm is standing up, they, 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 they're just uh, standing for you and, uh, and applauding you. And uh, that's uh, one of the best images of the sports. One thing I, f- I find really interesting about you is the way, and you mentioned it here, the way you build your brand. It's not just the fight game. Like You took your time to get to the UFC because you know that you were investing in your talents. And then also outside the cage, you have, you have the modeling, which a lot, a lot of people know about, and you have other things as well. How important is it for you, not just to take any fight and, and be a fighter, but to actually build your brand? So once the fight game ends, or even you know right now, that you have something else, not just the fights. Exactly. That's uh, that is the idea. You know, you you are on the top of your game for maybe ten to fifteen years, and then you you have to adapt and do something else. And uh, nobody makes uh, n- not a lot of people uh, does a, uh, a lot of millions uh, thanks to their uh, fighting career. So you have to to to, to help uh, your career in doing something else. And uh, modeling is one of the fields uh, I am developing and I'm working on since a few years right now. There is also uh, a- 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 um, acting that, uh, that I plan for, for, for the next years too. 
And, uh, you know, developing your, your brand, uh, but developing your social media, representing brands, not only MMA brands, but others that could, uh, that could need you for their development. I think it's uh, definitely one of the things I want to develop in, in order to, to make sure to, to have a, a safe future, you know, because we are not, uh, we are not sure that tomorrow I, I, I won't break my knee. Uh, we never know. And uh, in that sport, there is no uh, retirement. So you have to manage uh, all, the, all the possibilities. Probably a weird question, but how do you balance modeling with fighting? Because they seem like two completely different things. Like one, you're getting punched in the face, and the other one, I, I'm guessing yeah. they don't want you to be punched in the face. So how do you balance, balance that? Yeah, hopefully I develop a style when I, when I, when I take less. <laughs> but, you know, uh, for the moment, you know, with the with the makeup, you can you can hide the, the little the little you know the little things you have on your face, but. Um, no, I'm gonna do. No, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to not to be injured, not to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, broken face, so I can still walk outside of it. So, so yeah, yeah, I have to manage that. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good remark. Yeah. Just speaking about the acting, one thing you do in the cage after victory as well, very um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, like you do the splits uh, through victory as well. Is that somebody that, uh, um, looking at acting, somebody that you'd like to uh, mirror in his style that he, the, like Actually, some of the fights that and, and fight movies he was in, uh, is that something, that style of movie, or is it something different you'd be looking at? Yeah, for me, life is a, is a, is a huge open theater, you know, a lot of, um, I have a few friends in France that they, they, they told me I look like Jean-Paul Belmondo, which is one of the greatest uh, actors of his generations by, by the 50s, 70s. And uh, also a lot of people see in me the, the next uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme because, yeah, the splits, the fact that we, we used to live uh, the, in the north of France, him that was more in Belgium, that that's kind of the same. Going through Paris for a few years, then uh, trying to live the American dream uh, on the West Coast. So it's a little bit the the, the, the same uh, process in, a, in, a, in our life. So I'm sure uh, one day I'm going to meet him and uh, he has a lot of stuff to, to teach me because he went there before me. So, um, yeah, acting is definitely one of the things I want to, 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 to develop in, in my career. It's uh, very interesting. Jean-Claude Van Damme, known as the muscles from Brussels, um, the fire kid and one name touted around as well now is the crown prince of violence. It's where did the where, where did the uh, the fire kid come from? Where did that originate from? The the nickname. That was actually the the, the, the English media because I felt like maybe ten eleven times in the, in England and they they, uh, they they found this you know they found this one day and I was like yeah it's good it is uh, also a, a reference to my first uh, MMA coach uh, David Baron uh, that uh, teach me uh, uh, a lot of techniques when I was uh, in Paris the, the first time I was in Paris at the age of 18 19 and um, so for him because his name was the, the his nickname was the, the fireman uh, so that, that's a reference for him too and also the fact uh, that my style is uh, very explosive um, unpredictable and I cannot hide especially on a Skype video that I have uh, still a kid face <laughs> <laughs> um, it's one thing that's come into criticism actually Tom uh, surprisingly is um, your defensive tactics that people are saying you are, especially in your UFC debut is that you, you do get hit is that something that you're working on in Jackson's where you're... Because I know you're very aggressive at coming forward. You always seem to take the center of the octagon or cage. But is, is defense... Is that something that you're working on more to be elusive in there, be it either footwork or just um, head movement? Um, is that something that you're working on in, in Jackson Wink? Yeah, this thing has improved. Yeah. Technically, we've been working a lot on this special, uh, special topic. So um, I uh, promise you uh, 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 um, not taking that much uh, shots for the next fight. Um, but, you know, you can say that, uh, yeah, you have an aggressive style, but uh, you take a lot of shots. Uh, it, it is thanks to this aggressive style that I uh, put knockout and I finish uh, most of my fights. So, you know, when, you're, when you are with, uh, with, uh, with someone, when you're a woman, you don't say... Uh, yeah, I like that thing of your personality, but I don't like that thing. You know, you cannot you cannot be shopping like this. You know, you're more like okay, I take you as you are. But definitely and uh, technically, it's uh, something, and I knew I need to uh, improve, and I improved it a lot. And uh, that was something more than my knee, than my elbows, or than my resting. Something that I improved during that camp is to to te- to to um to try to not taking shots. So. Yeah, moving the head, footwork, 
analyzing more the distance. And, uh, and yes, but don't forget uh, Patrick Williams was a tough <laughs> opponent. Very, he, had the, he, has, he, has, he has the same size than the, my fifth opponent, but he has like 72 of which, uh, and my next opponent is like 63, 64. So you imagine having the same size, but at the same time has such a long arm. Mm. So it definitely uh, surprised me. And uh, don't forget that uh, maybe the fact looked easy because I make it easy in pl- going forward and giving everything I had. And uh, Patrick Williams was a tough yeah. opponent. Long arms, an athlete, very explosive. You can uh, latch, uh, watch uh, two fights two fights ago. The way he finished his uh, his, his his opponent is is explosive. It's very that's the kind of guy you don't want to fight actually because it can be a trap so fast and so unpredictable. So we should uh, we should thank uh, Patrick Williams uh, to have helped me on the fight. Um, is that something that you do, Tom? Do you study your your previous fights? Do you look back at fights for constant improvement, or do you leave that to your coaches? No, uh, you know, I, I, at every beginning of camp. We all uh, we all in front of the TV watching uh, my last fight, uh, my last fights sometime too, and uh, having notes on what I should um, improve. And then we are looking at the next opponent, his uh, his uh, his different fights, and we see how my uh, strangeness can go into his weaknesses. And at the same time, so it, it is the game plan. And at the same time, what I have to to work more uh, deeply, like on the long term, you know. So we have two programs, and we try to mix the two programs in order to make it better. So you will be the best you can for the next fight, and you will be trying to go in step by step for the long-term plan, because there is, this is, I'm not just seeing that fight. What I see is the title. So in order to, to plan the title, you don't, plan, you, don't, you don't train just for that fight, but you plan uh, for, the, for, the next, uh, for the next shot. So you plan uh, the future. I know you're not one for calling people out, but assuming you go in here and you 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 finish him or you, you get the win, what's next for Tom Duke and War? Are you looking at um, a certain opponent specifically, and also outside the cage? What's next for you as well? Because obviously you have a lot going on as well, not just inside the cage. We will see. We will see. There is a there is other very good events in the rest of the year. I would like to fight maybe maybe soon. We will see. It's a question of feeling. We never know uh, what's uh, the results of a fight that uh, didn't happen yet. So. For the moment, uh, sorry to not responding you already, already directly, but focus on the fight. Right after the fight, I will be able to tell you a little bit more. Um, one of the standout moms, I, I watch an awful lot of MMA, probably too much, my wife would tell you. Um, but I remember in um, Birmingham, champion versus champion, wow. where you took on Shay Walsh, um, and we had a journalist from Flow Combat on with us today, James Lynch, and we basically said it, to go and look at this finish. That was one of the moments that made me stand up and applaud where I was just in pure awe of the finish. And you have a, you have a habit of doing that to me. Um, it was one of the highlight. I think I tweeted something like, I've just watched world class. Yeah. It was a stunning finish. Um, it's something I said to you in an interview, and it was one of my favorite things I've ever said in an interview. <laughs> There's three French men that I love watching. One was Eric Cantona. The other is Paul Pogba and Tom Ducumois. I absolutely... You, what you do in there, you're an artist to the purest form in combat sport. I cannot wa- w- wait to watch you on Saturday night do what you do. And we wish you the best of luck on Saturday evening. Thank you for the support. And I, um, and I want to thank personally all the, the Irish audience uh, that, have, that have been amazing since uh, my very early fights with Bama. So I, f- I fought two times over there. And each time, the, 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 that was crowded. I, you know, the, each time I, I was fighting uh, Irish fighters and each time they gave me the, the, the respect at the end of the fight. And that's at that kind of moment that you can see that... Uh, what is a what is a, a real uh, supportive people and uh, people that really um, respect the high level athletes? So thank you guys for uh, for all of it. Tom, thank you very much for our time as well. Fight week, we we greatly appreciate it. And like we said, best of luck. And we have you on again when we're leading up or after the bout. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Tom. Thank you, guys. See Take you care. Time. Have a good evening, sir. Take care. Or morning yep. in Albuquerque. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye.